Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we're going to go through a hack I did for Dylan. He was asking on this site in particular here how this uh, works to have this little countdown timer right here inside of the button. And when it gets down to zero, I should have let it run a little bit longer before I turn this on. But when it gets down to zero, it will change the background color of the uh, button itself and they will also swap out the text in here. So I thought about it a little bit and built out my version of it. So let's just take a look at this here. And again, you know, it needs some styling and things like that. I'm just looking at the mechanics of how this works. So we got our text right here. We got our countdown. When it gets down to zero, what it's going to do is it change the text and change the background color of that button. So let's go in here and take a look what I have on the page. Pretty simple. I got one button right here and I gave it a data title of countdown button. And then, like I said, you need to style everything the way you want it, including width here because it's awfully wide, even though theirs was too. And then I have another element over here, which is just a text element. And this is called countdown timer. And all I have in here is the number 10. So my countdown is just going to be 10 down to zero. And so if you wanted to do 180 like the other guy's site, you would put 180 in here and then you would match that up with the tracking code. Now I will also show you in here in the CSS real quick. We have a uh, countdown timer, which is again the number 10 down here. I set that to display of inline block. Otherwise a headline element natively wants to have a have a display of block where it would take up the entire width of the bounding element. In this case here, the bounding element would be the column. And so it would take up the entire width of the column, but we don't want that. We only want it to take up as much space as it needs to have the numbers inside of it. So that's why we turned it into an inline level element. And then down here, we're going to add a class once the timer runs out. And in here, I just said background color red. You can obviously put any kind of changes to that button right into the uh, CSS right here, right into this new class we're going to add to that element. So we're going to take that off. We're going to go into our tracking code. So let's just open this up a little bit so we can see what we got going on. And so we got our script right here. And all we're going to say, first thing we need to do is we need to get this little number attached right into here. So again, this here is a block level element. So it takes up the entirety of the width on the page. And then we want to say we just want this as an inline level element just to be right here next to it. So that's why we turned it in line to begin with. And then we're just saying here we want our countdown timer, the text, to be appended to this button. But in particular, we want it uh, appended to just the text part of the button. So this part right here, the span on L button main is just the text part of that element. So let me just show you that real quick. We come in here, here is our button. And so here is the button wrapper right there. Here is the internal part of the button with the anchor tag right there. And then we have the text inside for the uh, L button main and the L button sub. If you recall on a button, you can have two lines of text in there. So we only have one line of text. So what we want to do is we want to append that little number that's hanging out down here. We want to append it to this element right here. And append means make it its last child element. So this is a span right now with a class of L button main. We want to make that number a child element of it. So when we're done, that number is going to show up right here. And in fact, let me just reload the page and it should be right there as we're going along. Let's open this up. Yeah. So right here is that headline got put in here inside of the span. So the span starts right there. Oops, we already clicked out. So the span starts right here and then ends up down there. And we got our text still in here. And then we appended this to the end of this element. So we made it the last child element inside of the span element. 
So that's kind of one of the toughest parts of this here. And then I just say here, we want to show it because what we're going to do is we're going to hide this ahead of time so that you don't see it on the page prior to it being appended to the text at the end. And in this case here, I just had time left of 10 seconds. So you want this number here to match the number of your timer element as well. So if you're 180, both of them should be 180. And then we got, uh, so we got, we're just going to set up a variable here. We're going to call this download timer equals set an interval. So all we're saying is we want a specific interval of time. In this case here, it is a thousand milliseconds, which is equal to one second. So we're going to, every time one second ticks off the clock, it's going to rotate through this, um, through this loop here. And each time we're also going to take off one. So we're going to start at 10, 9, 8, 7. You saw it as it was counting down. And then we're saying here, if time left is less than or equal to zero, we want to stop everything from happening and then make the changes on the screen. So the clear interval, uh, that will clear it as well. So you're going to start off as 10 as you go down. Um, you at the end when you reach a certain point in our case here zero when you reach a certain point in order to stop the the interval from doing its thing you have to clear the interval to turn it off and so then we have here so then with our button we're going to add that timer end class that we had there where you can put in in our case here we made it a background color of red and then we're going to take that same span element we had we're going to change the text inside of there so we change the text right there by using a text method inside of jQuery and then the last thing we're going to do here essentially is we're going to hide that timer again because we don't want it hanging out here at zero otherwise you just still see a zero at the end of the line right here and then here we just say uh, this is where we put in the number. So we're going to say here our timer element, again, the little number down here, our timer element is going to take on the text of time left. So again, up here, time left is equal to 10. So when we start off, time left here will be 10, 9, 8, 7. And again, every time it iterates through, it gets down here and it says, okay, what is time left? Well, it starts off at 10, we subtract off one, and so the next time this prints, that will be nine. So that's why you need to set a number in here to begin with, otherwise it's not going to have a number the first time it comes through. So we set the number as 10, here we subtract off one, when it changes for the first time, it will go to number nine. And that is it, we got all of about 10 lines of code here in order to have the text, show the number at the end, count it down, and then change everything at the end. So if you've got any questions, just let me know.